6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Today, Tom and his team from Impulse Record are recording at NASA's Space Kennedy Center both in the space station process facility where everything that comes and goes from the International Space Station is stored and the Vehicle Assembly Building. The Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB for short, is the tallest one-story building in the world and is where all of the Apollo rockets and space shuttles were assembled prior to crawling to the launch pad. Walking inside the VAB, one feels a sense of awe and inspiration, and it feels as if one were standing on sacred ground where so much history has taken place. Both buildings, though, present challenges today in recording their extremely large spaces. Coupled with the fact that it might actually rain inside the VAB and hinder the recording process, and worse yet, possibly ruin recording gear. It's widely known that the VAB being as tall as it is, has an active weather system with clouds that form on a regular basis and on occasion rains inside the building. That, along with a roaring HVAC infrastructure in both rooms, compounds the issue. Can the team get enough signal to noise ratio to create convolution reverb files? Recording the rooms versus having recorded files that can be used and transformed into convolution reverb that will work with their software is of concern. David Geiger, an authority on convolution reverb, explains what convolution reverb is and what the team is up against. When you're going to create or, or capture an impulse response, you need to inject energy into the room. You can do that in any number of ways. Uh, the simplest is a simple hand clap. And sometimes people will do that. They come into a strange room. Uh, an orchestra conductor will come into a hall and clap his hands. What he's actually doing is a crude impulse response. And what he's doing is injecting energy instantaneously, all frequencies, uh, with his hand clap. You can also use a more powerful method, such as a uh, starter pistol or even a spark gap. Uh, you can run a high voltage between two probes and the gap uh, the electricity jumps the gap, making a big, loud uh, sound. All those are instantaneous, or uh, all sound at the same time. The problem with that, though, is that all of these methods tend to be skewed in their tone. They favor some frequencies and uh, kind of diminish others, and so the timbre is slightly off. A way to fix that is to spread out all the frequencies over time, and usually what they will use is a, is a sweep tone, a logarithmic sine wave that is swept usually from 20 hertz, which is the lower limit of human hearing, all the way to 20 kilohertz, which is the highest level that most people can hear. And they, they do it over a number of seconds, and then you have a recording of a sweep tone in a reverberant environment, which then needs to be deconvolved by a separate piece of software. Uh, the software takes the original sweep tone and mathematically compares it to the resulting recording that you have and extracts the impulse response as a, uh, as a result. But uh, the whole thing boils down to you got to put energy into the room in order to get the impulse response out of the room. 